Dear Mayor, Hi, my name is Amanda Curl, and I'm 10 and a half years old. I was wondering if you are not busy. Could you please consider looking at my complaint? I am very concerned about the birds, because Saturday saw a bird that was poisoned under my car. It was so sad it made me sick. I thought maybe you could please tell a lot of people to stop poisoning the birds. Just think, maybe they'll start poisoning other animals like deer, rabbit, or bear. So please write back and tell me how it's going. Your friend, Amanda Crow. The words of a child to a public official asking help to solve a problem. What Amanda in Phoenix, Arizona saw was a wild pigeon that had been poisoned. She knew what to do. Across the street lives a man who cares about how wild pigeons are treated cares so much that for the last 10 years, he's made it his full-time job to alert people about the mistreatment of the bird of peace. You have to wonder when an when a impressionable young child sees a poison bird or a bird with an arrow through its chest, what does that do to that child? Basically what the Urban Wildlife Society does is present the credible information to anyone who wants it. Hopefully, this will prevent these kind of abuses from happening out of ignorance, out of stupidity, and out of just plain carelessness. And that started a 13-year odyssey that doesn't look like it's ever going to end. Dave Roth is a rare individual. In the last 50 years, the public attitudes about pigeons in the West have taken a dramatic turn for the worse. The problem is relatively simple to understand. The solutions are not. Pigeons seem to bring out the best and the worst in people. One thing I've discovered is that there's a whole industry devoted to killing pigeons. And this is an industry that's based upon death, lies, and making a buck. They see pigeons as an endless source of income. These descendants of the rock dove are victims of their own success. They live in a wide variety of climates. They adapt quickly to nesting in buildings that resemble the rocky cliffs of their ancestors. And they have few natural enemies, as hawks and falcon numbers have declined dramatically over the last half century. Pigeons have grown in numbers, particularly over the last two or three decades, certainly in the Western world, with the proliferation of cheaper foods, fast food, etc. As a result, we, we have, we have so-called or certainly perceived problems with pigeon occupancy. And, and those problems in the main are people problems, not pigeon problems. An established population is almost impossible to eliminate. And whenever they find a ready source of food, survivors can quickly breed replacements for those that are killed. But in cities like London and Paris, flocks of feral pigeons have become quite large. For decades, people have enjoyed feeding these birds in the park. But several decades ago, public perceptions of pigeons began to change. So often we hear pigeons referred to as rats with wings. This was something that uh, Woody Allen coined in his movie Stardust Memories 22 years ago. Public perception of the pigeon has, has done a nosedive in the last 50 years because of wonderful propaganda on the part of the pest control industry, which is a multi-million multi dollar industry worldwide, and has, has reduced our perception of the birds to, to being a disease carrier and nothing more. Any animal that lives in large groups in an urban area can create problems for society. But there's a big difference between a messy creature and one perceived as a threat to public health. As bird populations increased, local governments began to take increasingly strong action. A calculated move by the multi-billion dollar pest control industry convinced public officials the birds represented a serious threat to public health. You know, almost invariably, when checking with the local or state health departments, they report that nobody has ever gotten sick from a pigeon. Cities in North America and Europe sent out hunters to shoot pigeons. Birds were trapped and killed. And in the United States, the idea of poisoning the birds became popular until the public saw the results of these methods. In the 1980s, the pigeon problem, as it was called, was on the mind of many governments, but nothing seemed to work. Shooting, 
trapping, even wholesale poisoning of flocks quickly reduced the numbers, but the surviving birds repopulated immediately. There seemed to be no solution to permanently reducing the number of feral pigeons. The pest control industry enjoyed a constant flow of business. Now people are beginning to understand that we've been culling for, for decades, in fact hundreds of years, and yet we still have just as many, if not more, pigeons than we had before we started. So we need a different solution. The ancient Swiss city of Ball was one of the towns wrestling with a growing pigeon population. Ball tried killing the birds off and put a marksman on the city payroll to regularly shoot the birds off rooftops. But, of course, the population never declined. In desperation, the city turned to a young scientist named Daniel Hogwalker Noggle. His mission was to study the problem and recommend a solution. What the young man discovered was that the answer was not in how to deal with the pigeons, it was how to deal with human beings. Man hat sie einfach abgeschossen und ich habe einmal bald einmal gesehen, dass eben das Töten von Tauben überhaupt keinen Effekt hat. Also man kann die Tauben Bestände über die Nahrungsmenge regulieren. Und das war unsere Idee, dass wir das versuchen wollten in den Städten. What Daniels research showed was that the key to controlling the pigeon population was simple. The problem was too much food, mostly supplied by well-meaning pigeon feeders. So the city created zones where pigeon feeding was permitted, but restricted it elsewhere. An aggressive information campaign helped educate the population, and public feeding declined. Und dieses Taubenfüttern ist natürlich nicht böse gemeint, aber das Taubenfüttern ist Ursache eben für die Probleme, die die Tauben haben und eben auch wir Menschen mit den Tauben. Daniel also conceived of the idea of creating nesting places for the birds, such as in the attic of an old church, to keep the pigeons from nesting elsewhere. He and his team designed systems to catch the birds in these boxes. Sie werden alle 14 Tage etwa geputzt und hier findet auch eine, eine sanfte Bevölkerungsregulation statt, könnte man sagen. Also die, die Eier werden regelmäßig entfernt, sodass diese Schwärme eben kontrolliert klein bleiben. The Swiss experiment received little attention for many years. Unlike radical measures like poisoning, which have an immediate impact on the number of birds, Daniel's idea took time to prove itself. But eventually, the results of Hogwalker Nagel's methods were too startling to ignore. Und über den Effekt haben wir dann innerhalb von vier Jahren ein, eine Reduktion des Basler Taubenbestandes von über 50 Prozent erreicht. Von etwa 25.000 Tauben haben wir heute vielleicht 5.000 bis 8.000 Tauben hier in Basel. Daniel's concept is now being tried in a number of cities, such as in Germany and in England. A British organization called PICAS works to educate local citizens and governments about the humane ways to control feral pigeon populations, and has also created feeding areas and nesting sites that look much like the ancient dovecotes these birds' ancestors came from. But although experiments like balls appear to work in humanely reducing flock sizes, the residue of the anti-pigeon propaganda is still causing problems for the birds throughout the world. In London's Trafalgar Square, a huge flock of pigeons were fed by the public each day, with seed purchased from a small stand. In an attempt to discourage the birds, the mayor of London recently decreed no more grain could be sold. What the mayor didn't anticipate was the public outcry when they realized the action would lead to the starvation of thousands of birds. In the United States, some of the most radical anti-pigeon measures are still at work. Pest control companies are still willing to poison the birds. Es ist so, dass die Taube natürlich keineswegs gefährlicher ist als Krankheitsüberträgerin als andere wildlebende Tiere. The results are sad to witness, as the birds often take days to die. This is the spectacle that moved Amanda Curl to write to the mayor of her city. Ever since he's been a mayor and he's got all those documents to sign and letters to write back, he's probably forgotten what people are doing to pigeons. For one thing, they don't do any harm to people. And it seems like people like to do things to them because I think they think it's funny to see them struggle. 
Though they might be rare, many cities include people who are dedicated to helping injured wild birds, and that includes pigeons as well. It's important that they, that they are strong enough that they can survive out there, and that, that is the duty of the rehabber, is to make sure that they have a fighting chance out in the wild. If every parent would let a, a child raise a couple of pigeons from babies on up, I think it would teach them to be a gentle person. We need more people that don't want to kill. We need more people that want to help. It would be nice if more governments were aware of what the streets of Ball, Switzerland look like today. There are still pigeons, but they are no longer a nuisance. And the team at Ball University have moved on to new research projects on feral pigeons. Working with a graduate student, Eva Rose, Daniel is trying to determine the daily behavior of the Ball pigeons to provide a greater understanding of where they go within the city and how flocks in different neighborhoods interact with their environment. Using a new technology called GPS, they can now precisely track the daily movements of feral birds. This information becomes important because an analysis of the bird's blood and feathers can reveal varying levels of toxic substances. This makes the city pigeon an incredibly cheap environmental monitoring device and has already led to identifying areas of the city where pollution levels are high but undetected. Many people see great danger in how human beings treat the living things around them. There's an obvious impact on a child like Amanda, seeing a bird mistreated. And the people who know well of government's war against these wings see danger in how society treats these city birds. Mahatma Gandhi said that the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way it treats its animals. And you know, there's a correlation there's a strong scientific correlation between animal abuse and violence in society. This is the legacy that we're building by abusing pigeons. It's ironic that we once revered these birds as symbols of fertility. For as long as humans have lived in cities, there have been pigeons around them. And until the pest control industry decided to profit at the expense of pigeons, public attitudes about the birds were normally favorable. With the success of a simple idea in Switzerland, there is hope that the long war against the birds by the Western world may be headed for a truce. And there may be a day when people can again see these big birds living near them and not see a problem. When we do lose touch with nature, that's when we start killing ourselves, basically. Because when we destroy our environment, when we destroy the creatures around us, we destroy parts of ourselves. Children have a positive view of animals and birds and I, I know that when I do lectures and talks children are receptive and responsive to birds. Interestingly, for some reason there seems to be a magnetism with pigeons that, that, that isn't there with other birds. I just like pigeons because they don't do any harm to other people so I guess that's what I wish other people would do to each other live in harmony like the birds. Someday, instead of looking up to the sky and seeing what some have called a rat with wings, people will again see what ancient people saw in these creatures, a symbol of love and fertility, a neighbor in our cities, the bird of peace. <laughs>